You're alone on an island surrounded by cannibals and a mute survivor named Kelvin. Things don't look good, and you could use a little help. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today I'm sharing everything I wish I knew sooner about Sons of the Forest. First things first, Sons of the Forest is currently in early access. That means things may change by the time you watch this video. That being said, if you find yourself wanting to share your best tip with the community, feel free to leave a comment down below. We're all about sharing knowledge here on the channel, and your tip could just be the thing that truly unlocks the game for someone else. That all being said, let's dive in. I figured we'd start as basic as we could with some gathering tips. In Sons of the Forest, you'll need to chop down a ton of trees to get your base up and running. There are a few important things I want to point out here. First is that you can use any body of water with a current and send logs downstream. This is helpful if you're playing on a team and need to start clearing trees away from your base. Unfortunately, Sons of the Forest doesn't currently have a sled to move resources, so you're forced to use other methods to quickly move materials. Second, once you've chopped down trees, you can actually remove the stumps as well. At first, this completely eluded us, but after a little trial and error, we realized we didn't have to build around the stumps. We could simply remove them. By clicking or clicking and holding your mouse button, you'll wind up an overhead chop, and after a few swings, bust the log into pieces, allowing you to build in that space. Finally, in terms of efficiency, did you know that you can throw your logs directly into the log storage units? You don't even need to interact with them. Simply take your logs, chuck them in that general direction, and the game magically takes them and sorts them into an available holder. While it might only save you a few seconds, those add up, and it's easily one of the best quality of life features we discovered in the game. It's also worth mentioning that one of the first items you should track down in the game is the modern axe. This is a much stronger variant than the tactical axe and makes the entire process of chopping down trees much less painful. You can find the modern axe at this small campsite here. Once your base is up and running, you'll need to defend your home from cannibals and mutants. In the beginning, this will be a relatively easy task, but as the days drag on, more and more enemies will swarm your base. Realize from that first interaction that bones are an invaluable resource, mainly because they allow you to build bone armor, amongst other things. To create bones, simply take the body of a cannibal and throw it on a fire. After a little roasting, it disappears, and in its place will be a pile of bones. Make sure to store these for later use as they are a valuable resource. Speaking of bones, let's talk about bone armor. As someone that didn't play the original game, The Forest, I really had no idea how the player armor system worked in the game. I figure it might elude some of you as well, so here it is. By taking all of those newly acquired bones, along with some other basic resources, you can craft bone armor. This will add one piece of armor to your character, indicated by the outer ring on your HUD, displayed in the bottom right of your screen. You can apply multiple types of armors, they can be different, but early on, bone is a decent choice as it's easy to make and provides good protection. Not all armor performs the same in combat, so using a little trial and error, you'll find what works best for you. If you plan to explore some caves, you absolutely need armor. I hate to admit it, but it took far too long before I realized how to quick swap items in Sons of the Forest. The lack of hotkeys is terrible, but at least there is a solution, albeit not a great one. With your inventory open, go ahead and click on this backpack up top. This will move it to the center of your screen. From here, add all the items that you want at your fingertips. Weapons, medicine, food, drink, add it to the pack. There are some limitations, so you'll have to experiment to find what works best for you. Back in the game, hold the inventory button and your character will hold up the backpack. From here, you can click on the item you want and voila, hot swapped. Before heading off to explore the world, might I offer some quick tips about our lovable mute, Kelvin. First off, protect this man with your life because once he dies, he's gone for good. We learned that the hard way in our playthrough and it was a traumatic experience, let me tell you. However, with Kelvin alive, it's important to issue him commands that will actually make an impact on your experience. Before having him gather anything, tell him to follow you. Then lead him to the exact location you want resources. Once he's there, then use the command to direct him to the resource that you want. If you don't do this crucial first step, then Kelvin will simply wander to gather resources wherever you issued the commands, and that's not good if they're placed far away from your base. Having storage options for logs, sticks, and other materials he's gathering near where you want him to gather will ensure he harvests as efficiently as possible. Kelvin is really the superstar of the game, so let's treat the man with a little respect. Speaking of Kelvin, I think it's worth mentioning that one of his best functions is actually providing food for your team. 
If you give him the order to go catch fish, the man will quite literally supply you with enough food to feed a small army. This is a fantastic option as the fish traps in the game aren't great and an easy way to build up your stockpiles. Something we learned through some trial and error, once you catch the fish, cook it on a fire. Obviously, that's a no-brainer. But pay attention to when it changes visually and quickly pull it off before it burns. Once you do that, you can then use the drying racks to extend the life of the cooked food. There's not a huge downside to eating rotten food at this point in the game, but I'm sure that'll be tweaked throughout early access. Since we're talking food, let's talk deer. The forest is full of them, but they are elusive little buggers. Lucky for you, the fly swatter trap is a great way to kill them. Place them in high traffic areas. I can't stress this enough. Location is key, but if you nail that, the trap will do all of the work for you. One-shotting the creatures, giving you access to valuable food and resources. Finally, don't let the seasons throw you off. Come wintertime, harvesting nearly everything becomes a huge pain, so you need to plan accordingly. All of those mushrooms and berries you are harvesting or growing, they're nowhere to be found. So be sure you're building up a healthy stockpile of food throughout the other seasons. If you're like me, then you feel most at home with a bow and arrow. I personally like keeping my cannibals at arm's length, thank you very much. In order to craft stone arrows, you'll need a few things, but most important of all are small rocks and feathers. No matter the season, the best place to get small rocks is on the shore. There's not a lot of foliage here, rocks are plentiful, and even during the winter, when rocks are hard to come by elsewhere, you can pick them up here with ease. Now, in terms of feathers, there are a few ways to go about this. You can build birdhouses, which will auto-generate feathers. This is a decent way to build up a small stockpile, but there is a better way. If you head to the shoreline, you'll find tons of seagulls. These are easy to take out with either a melee or ranged weapon, and you can hit the bodies multiple times for multiple sets of feathers. A small tip I wanted to make sure you all knew about, when you stumble across a boombox, be sure to give it a good whack. If you break them open, they'll reward you with a precious circuit board. They can only be used to create a few niche combat items at this point, but I guarantee you this will be a crucial component as more content is added to the game. We were lucky enough to stumble upon this camp here, which has a whole mess of boomboxes, so we walked away with a nice score. Speaking of scoring, let's talk about Virgin. No, no. We're not going to do that. I want to talk about playing as a party. One thing that actually shocked us was that Sons of the Forest actually uses a partially instanced loot system. That means if I'm in game and Livid is in the same game with me, we both have independent loot. Within every camp or cave, not only are we getting one set of items, we're getting two. And that's a big deal because that means more shared resources when playing in a party. I get that not everything needs to be a multiplayer experience, but don't sleep on this subtle tip because if you really want to see how far you can push the game, whether it's building, crafting, or combat, the simple truth is, it's better with friends. Your base is your new home because by the looks of things, you're going to be stuck on this island for quite some time. There are a few things worth mentioning when it comes to getting started with a solid base. First thing I recommend is crafting a repair hammer. This allows you to simply fix things that are broken instead of deconstructing them and reconstructing them. It's a valuable quality of life thing that's easy to overlook, but makes your life way easier if you just embrace it. Second, consider building reinforced fires, lots of them. We actually decided to build a nice ring around our base, which gave us enough line of sight at night that we could continue working with confidence. To do this, simply build a fire by cracking a few sticks on the ground, then going back into your inventory, select large rocks and place them around the fire. This will allow it to burn for longer. Just be aware that any exposed fires will go out if it rains. Finally, learn to embrace the different ways to manipulate logs and sticks in the game. By placing logs vertically, you can then use your axe to create sharp points at the top, which will deter cannibals. Second, you can do something similar with sticks. Place them vertically in the ground and manipulate them so that they're set at a 45 degree angle. Any enemies that run into them will be impaled on the stake, taking a ton of damage. Just be careful you don't accidentally run into them yourself. Finally, when you're setting routes, consider the entire map. With your GPS pulled out, use the middle mouse button to toggle through the various zoom states. This will give you a much better picture of the entire world. We recommend building near a river because you'll have access to fresh water and fish, but at the end of the day, it's your choice. Let's end with some essential items. If you want to discover these for yourself, now would be a good time to click off the video, as I'll be sharing the location of some pretty awesome equipment. First is the slingshot. This is a great early range weapon that you can find right here. It utilizes small rocks, which are relatively easy to find and keep stockpiled up, so it makes a great weapon for the early parts of the game. Also a great early game weapon, especially in team play, is the stun baton, which you can find here close to the crash site. 
this will render most enemies completely lifeless for a good few seconds, opening up your teammate to land that killing blow. Next is the Modern Axe, which we talked about before. This is an essential item you'll want to pick up as soon as possible. There's also the Fireman's Axe located here. This is the slowest to swing, but the most powerful from a melee damage perspective. Unfortunately, you will need the shovel before you can access this item. To get the shovel, you'll need two other pieces of equipment. First is the Rebreather, which can be found in this cave on the coast. There is no prerequisite item needed to get the Rebreather, so this is a good place to start. Located in this cave here, you'll find the Rope Gun. Be prepared for a lot of fighting as this cave is massive, but it's an essential item if you hope to gain access to the shovel. With both of these items in hand, you can head to this cave here and work your way through until you find the shovel. This opens up so much more of the game, so we recommend getting it as soon as possible. So there you have it, everything I wish I knew sooner about End Night Games Sons of the Forest. As I said before, things are definitely going to change throughout the course of early access, so keep it right here by dropping a like on the video and subscribing. We'll be covering Sons of the Forest as well as other great games throughout 2023, so be sure to subscribe so you never miss a new video. I also want to invite you to join the legacy gaming community on Discord. We recently reworked our entire server, so if you're looking for a place to hang out, win free prizes, talk about great games, and group up with friends, check out the link in the description below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.